I know that this the head coaching thing isn't new for you, but what was it like the other night being able to do that here and just the, the atmosphere and everything involved and just the opening night of college basketball? Uh, it was it was probably anxious. I was anxious to start the game off and, and uh, coming out. Um, it uh, but then once you get into the game, you're into the game, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. You know, obviously our fans are great. They make us always feel good, and and our guys played well in spurts. And we did some really good things to get people excited. Norm on Hawk Talk last night, Bill mentioned that he thinks it's going to be an interior-focused game. Do you see it the same way, and what does that mean to you? Without a doubt, they, they they've got two big guys that uh, in Nelson and, and Morgan that may be better than any big guy we play against in our league. I mean, they're they're that good. You know, one being 6'11", and being able to play out on the perimeter, shoot threes, handle it, drive it. They can play off the post. Uh, Morgan is a, he's a load. <clears throat> he's a guy that can up and under you, very, very skilled, can shoot the ball to about 15 feet as well. So it's going to be a huge, huge challenge for us. Yeah, and I know the rosters are completely different two years ago compared, compared to this year. Is there anything you can take from that close game against uh, North Dakota State? Well, you know, the one thing is they, they did a great job. They had great length, that team that played us here. And they stayed between us and the basket. We didn't play very well. We didn't move the ball well offensively. We just got finished watching it as well. We didn't shoot it well at all. But our guys were very young, too. It was during the COVID uh, situation. Give them a lot of credit. Uh, uh, they played well. They made big shots when they needed to. And they really spread, it, spread us out quite a bit because they played five out. With the, uh, they had a big guy by the name of Rocky at that time. It was about six nine, but played out on the perimeter. So I think they're playing a little different than they were before because they got the two bigs. But uh, they're a very, very well coached team. Coach Richmond does an unbelievable job with them. Coach, I know it's in the infancy, but um, in looking ahead, it's, you know you've had great defensive teams most every year in the past twenty, uh, but but with Kevin, KJ, Juan and others, just what is the ceiling defensively for this team? We should be very good. We have an opportunity to be very good. We've got a lot of guys with good hands. Uh, they should be able to move their feet. We have a length. Uh, we've got to do a better job of protecting the rim, rim and that's our big guys. Um, you know, because once you can slide KJ out there to guard the wing, now that puts a lot of pressure on people. So we need Ernest and Zach and, and Zuby and those guys to be able to protect the protect the rim as well, but we're excited about where we could get to defensively. We're not there yet at all, but uh, we're gaining on it every day. Can, can you put your, your finger on the progression of the urgency from, from game to game once the season gets rolling? Obviously, next week you got a pretty big one, a high profile game, and, and you don't want, I'm sure, want them to look ahead to that, but from game one to game two, does the urgency turn up? And, and with that game lingering, does it, does it kind of factor in too? No, I don't think at all. I don't think at all. We got a young group. We got a lot of guys that, that are playing new roles, uh, playing roles that they've never played before at all. And uh, so they're all trying to get better every single day. We know we need to. We watched the film. You know, we did some good things. We did some things that weren't very good as far as moving the ball. We got kind of stagnant. Defensively, to start off the second half, we, we didn't have the, uh, the intensity and the focus that we needed. So there's a lot of things we can learn and try to get better. And, and our guys know, especially the older guys know, it's a process. You got to continue to try to get better every day. I'm curious, game one to game two, in terms of the teams taking a step forward, where do you want to see that kind of happen between the two games? Well, I want us to be more consistent defensively in what we're doing uh, as far as rotations, getting the spots that we need to, obviously protecting the rim. Uh, we did a good job on the offensive glass last game, but we need to continue to do that. But we also need to do a better job of rotation rebounding on the defensive end. That's going to be key to us. And, and, and then our spacing, our spacing offensively has to continue to get better. And I'm curious with DeJuan, um, just how's he doing? It looked like he maybe tweaked something during the game the other day. Oh, he's, he's fine. He's, he's fine. You know, Juan, uh, Juan's a battler, and, and I think maybe he tweaked something real quick. But, you know, he didn't want to come out. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, we need Juan to push the pace. <clears throat> I think Jay Will does a great job of that. Coach talked about that yesterday, and that we need to get out and transition even more. And, and Juan needs to sparehead some of that along with Jay Will and some of the other guys.
Coach was probably dying to talk to you about the game. How did that work logistically? When did you first see him? And what was his first statement to you? To be honest with you, he was pretty calm. He was pretty calm. I know he probably wasn't very calm watching it on TV. And, but his TV, you know, I guess the feed for ESPN kept going in and out. So maybe that gave him time to calm down uh, when he was watching. I know the one game that I missed last last year or two, uh, two years ago when I had COVID and I was out and I had to stay at home to watch it, my wife wanted to kill me because I was down in my basement and I could not stop screaming and yelling and all this stuff. So I would imagine there was some of that going on. But by the time I saw him in the morning, he was much more calm and said, hey, good job, guys. We did, we did well, but we got a lot more to do and we got to get a lot better. Did he ever text you like, Norm, way to go, we won. No, 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 no. And with the NCAA situation, um, stipulations, we can't talk until the next day. Can't talk to after 12 midnight, we can't talk. And I'll be honest with you, after 12 midnight, I was dead asleep, and I know he probably is already asleep by about 10.30. Have you guys settled on your fifth starter for game two? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we settled on it. Uh, there's, there's different scenarios uh, out there. Of, of how we got playing it, and, and you no, know, I know coach is this way. I, we're not getting caught up with starters. All right, we probably have six, maybe even seven starters. We're not worried about that. What we're getting caught up is the best lineup we can put out there to give us the best chance to get off to a good start. With with Zuby, he he had the block and then got on the floor to to save that possession late in the game. Uh, I saw you and Jay Well jump off the bench, and I, I know those are the kinds of plays you want. But is that a case of a guy? Just trying to make a chance to show, hey, I, I can be out here. And, and how much do you enjoy seeing that game in hand, a guy making that kind of play? We, we love that. Zub, Zuby's like that every single day. You know, he goes after balls, he's tough, and he's getting better and better all the time. And, and uh, we want to see that from all of our guys, which I thought all our guys played very hard the other night. But when you see a guy do that, when maybe the game is not in doubt anymore and he's playing that hard, that's the way it should be. You know, we always talk to our guys about how NBA players are. And, you know, a lot of times guys get in the game in the NBA, you know, two minutes left and realize how hard those guys play for that two minutes that they're out there. And then that two minutes build into more minutes, more minutes, more minutes. So I was really proud to see him. Do that. Is that a thing? I mean, you can make a case for yourself in those yeah, minutes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it, can, it, it can make a coach look at you a different way and say, hey, maybe we need to get this guy in here mm -hmm. and that stuff. But with, with Zuby, we, we see that every day from him. He's yeah. going to be a terrific player. I'm sure you were there here at least part of the time Joe was here, Joe Dooley, in his 10 years uh, at Kansas. You got a favorite story from the past of Joe Dooley, and then what does he give you on the bench now? Well, Joe, there's, there's a lot of stories you can have with Joe, but, but uh, the one thing about Joe is as a person, anybody that knows him, Joe will start at least three conversations and not finish any one of them. <laughs> and then you'll be 15 minutes down the line, he'll go back to the first conversation. Mm -hmm. So you really got to pay attention when you're talking with Joe. But he, Joe has uh, Joe has great energy. Uh, he's He's been in the fire. He knows what's going on out there. Uh, he knows how to be, you know, he knows how to be an assistant coach, a head coach. Uh, leader, uh, he did he did a great job as well as as uh, Jeremy Case. You know, Jeremy Jeremy did a, a terrific job. Our whole our whole staff did a great job in in those things. So, you know, I'm I'm happy Joe's back. I love seeing him. You know, we did spend you know a couple of years together and and everything. But having him back and his family back is pretty awesome.